but strive to make things happen instead of looking like a spectator. He didn't do that last night. Two are back to back. Three pointers almost faded back. When I saw him hit those, almost, yeah, almost, he, it, was, it, was, it was almost, it was almost Fred Sanford from Sanford to San Weezy. I'm coming up to join you, honey. I was like, no, 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 that's what I'm not Weezy. You're not, you're, no, 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 uh, Elizabeth, 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 Elizabeth. I'm hey. coming up to join you, honey. Weezy's not Jefferson. on that, sir. I got it. Weezy's Jefferson, but I'm, yeah. I, listen, yeah. I'm George Jefferson wannabe, so I, I confuse the issue sometimes. But the point Elizabeth, that I'm trying to make is the big one. Elizabeth is the big one. I'm coming to join you, honey, because I thought that I was like. Whoa, he hit some threes. Go ahead, Lonzo. And was looking for his shot, too. Was looking to make things happen. Embraced the challenge. I was very, very, very happy with what I saw from Lonzo Ball last night. Again, it's not about the production. It's not about the numbers. It's about are you going after it? Are you trying to make it happen? I saw that. I was very happy with him. And I must confess, let me say this on national television. Okay. I may have been wrong about Mr. Brandon Ingram. Oh, oh. I may have been wrong. About that oh, kid. So Once again, you. and let me know what listen, listen, I may have been wrong because here's what I'm saying. He's still too damn skinny which Draymond Green proved once again when he nudged him under the basket and tapped the ball out, you know what I'm saying, to give them the final possession, let the clock run out. But Brandon Ingram, forget the 32 points once again. Aggression going after it, embracing the challenge, like a number two overall pick should. I was very, very pleased with what I saw from him as well. Julius Randle coming off the bench, embracing that, that, that role as, as the Energizer Bunny off the bench. He was doing that last night. Of course, Golden State did what Golden State does. Steph Curry is just sensational. We all know it. Kevin Durant was his regular sensational self. Quiet 30, 29 points, if it could be quiet, because Steph Curry just took over in overtime. But what I took from the game is what I saw from the young Lakers. Oh. I saw Randall, oh. I saw Ingram, oh. and I saw Alonzo. Why don't you just tell the truth and say, what I took from the game was Max was right. Why uh, can't you just say that? Because I was right when I said it. No. This is you the weren't point. right. That last night they Never showed Never show a fool half a job is the old expression. This is the problem with the NBA right now. The problem is, what do you do about the fact that guys are jumping from high school or even one and dones? Because one and dones is the same thing as high school just about. You, there's really not much of a difference. You know why Kyle Kuzma, who didn't play last night? That's right, he did not play. You know why he's the best player on the Lakers right now, really? Because he went to college. He, he progressed through the years as a player and came out a, a, a formed basketball player. He'll still get better. But he's a 22-year-old man, not a 19-year-old kid, who had four years of development before he hit the league. Lonzo Ball had a year. Brandon Ingram had a year. Brandon Ingram was 19 years old. Lonzo Ball, 19 years old when they hit the league. They're still, they're not men yet. Not in the same way that a guy like Kuzma is, who's several years older at a critical stage of development and got all that coaching. Kyle Kuzma wasn't going to be an NBA player when he was 19, and people would have given up on him if he would have tried. He had to develop as a player. And while the NBA has the G League, it's much different, G League, now it's a G League, much different than Major League Baseball that has a minor league system where even top draft picks can develop. Double, single A, double A, high A ball, double A, triple A. They can develop without all the eyes on them. So people don't make rash decisions, Stephen A. If you would have looked at Brandon Ingram last year, you would say, this is not an NBA player. You know why? Because he really wasn't. He was, as you said, he was as skinny as could be. He was, didn't have his man bones yet, still doesn't. Not a strong enough guy to play in the NBA. You could, it, it could even damage his ultimate ceiling if people start to make judgments based on that, and he tries too hard to be the thing people want to be eventually instead of a work in progress. Brandon Ingram's a work in progress with a very high upside. Lonzo Ball is a work in progress with a very high upside. Hold on. And you know what else I noticed? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The crowd was behind Lonzo. For all the hand-wringing in the national media about Lonzo Ball, Lakers fans support him. Well, let, well, let's be clear. They support him because the people like me who are going to hold him accountable. Damn it, you better support him. Because the reality of the situation is this. It's not my job to wear pom-poms and be no damn cheerleaders, nor is it yours, Max Kellerman. It's their job. And the fact of the matter is we got to record what we saw. I recall just 24 hours ago you confessing. You were ele your, ele your level of concern about elevated. About Lonzo. About his so, shot. Uh, listen, the point about is, his shot. that's fine. Shot. And I'm saying to you, these are the kind of things that you have to pay attention to. Brandon Ingram, I didn't tell you he was no scrub. I said, I don't want to hear no damn comparisons to Kevin Durant. Let's be specific. The reason why I'm willing to sit up there and accept a mulligan and to be willing to say, rather, not a mulligan, but be willing to say, oh, it's called Max again. No, no not, not at all. It's Max again. That's oh very God. corny. Come Max on, is right you again. Might wanna, you might just want to chill and just listen because that's, that's revealing your corny side. Just work that with me here. Good. No, not, not at all. The point is, Brandon Ingram has to get in the weight room. He has to put on some weight and all this stuff. He has to develop. You're right about that. But the flip side to it is that to bring up your analogies, Max, it's not just about where you are in terms of you only have one year in college. It's about where you're drafted. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Compared to 
others who are drafted. For example, Jason Tatum, a year Duke. Well, look at how he's playing. So what I'm trying to say to you is there are individuals, of course, they all have to develop. Of course, they all get better. Of course, they'll all blossom ultimately into a legitimate NBA player. But it's not about that. It's about measuring them against who you could have had. Like, for example, when we sit up there and we think about Sam Bowie. Sam Bowie is a name from the 80s that was drafted number two overall by the Portland Trailblazers. The biggest problem with Sam Bowie was not that he was injury prone. The biggest problem with Sam Bowie is not that he wasn't unable to materialize into a bona fide big Michael man in the NBA. It was problem. the fact that he, they passed on Michael Jordan to grab him. Yeah. That's, Jordan that's hit what the matters. And Jordan hit the league and he averaged 28 points as a rookie. Can't ever share. And right? Magic Johnson, when he was 19 years old, but, was an amazing but you, player. But you look at Barkley, who was drafted after Jordan, right? and you don't but judge my, it because my, you couldn't, you didn't pass on Jordan to take Barkley. My point that's is why you're not judged that way. You use a very high draft you do is you survey the board and you think who has a chance to be in the hall of fame right like who has a chance to be a great player i want that guy but not every hall of famer or even perennial all-star develops at the same rate some take several years to develop and because of the lure of the nba money players who would really be better off developing for several more years under the radar enter the draft now you're the lakers or any other team and you see a player, you go, see, I think that guy has the biggest upside. He may not be ready yet. It may take a couple of years, but ultimately, I think that's the best player. Grab him. Grab him. I don't care if it's the number one or the two pick. And it's going to take a couple of years whoa, whoa, for him whoa, to whoa. develop. Question, question. You really, really, really think you're going to sit here with a straight face and tell me that you, former afternoon drive host in Los Angeles, California. Yes, indeed. You're going to look me in my face and say to, uh, and lie to a national audience. I don't lie. And say that the Lakers took Lonzo because he has the greatest upside of any other pick that was available? I think that's why they took him, yes. You are... Don't make me... I, I swear if I have water, I might throw it on you. Like, treat you like a wicked witch in the world. You've got to be kidding me. The greatest think, upside... Who excuse you think, me. Let me, think let me they thought had a better excuse upside? Excuse me. Listen, I think that you can make the argument that Tatum had the better upside. No, Tatum's more polished. Excuse me. Excuse me. You can still make the argument he had a greater upside. You can make an argument that De'Aaron Fox had a greater upside. I mean, let me be very clear. Let me be very clear. We can't blame Magic Johnson for making the pick because we understand we still want to believe in Lonzo. We still want to believe in that upside. But let's oh, not act, hold on, no. let's not act like a, I said upside. We, I, didn't say, I didn't say he was the void of an upside. I said the greatest upside. Yeah, you try to be slick and change the narrative. Stop interrupting me when I'm making my point to you because I'm coming right back to you. You're not going to act like Magic Johnson didn't make this decision devoid of business. Because we all know in L.A., at that particular juncture, considering how Jim Buss had dis destroyed this franchise, okay, and Janie Buss allowed it because of their relationship with one another to some degree, as wonderful as she is, don't tell me that Magic Johnson made a pure basketball What is decision. good business? What's good business? What is it? Good business is when you have a championship team. Of all the players in that draft who were available at that time, the belief was that Lonzo Ball, not just bringing Showtime back, Dr. Jerry Buss wanted Showtime with the Lakers, but Magic not only gave you the excitement, but he gave you the best chance to win. Those two things both have to exist if you're talking about business. Prim primary among them is winning. Secondarily, doing it in an exciting fashion. If you're exciting but you don't win, that doesn't help you. Lonzo Ball, the feeling was, made everyone around him better and in the future would continue to make the team better. That's why he's, he's a contagious kind of asshole. But all I'm saying to you, Max, is it doesn't negate the point that I'm making. It wasn't purely a basketball decision as to why Magic Johnson made this pick. If it were purely basketball, if this were the Sacramento Kings with the number two overall pick, if this this were the New York Knicks with the number two overall pick. The pressure to pick Lonzo would not have been there. You're saying Magic succumbed to pressure? I'm saying, I'm saying well, it's possible. I'm saying it's possible. I think because, because whatever it's not else the they had to believe he's business. the best player. I'm saying business. Fine, the, but the, the combination of the business player. and basketball. The combination of business and basketball. There is nobody, I'm going to say it loud and clear, there is nobody.